Red cards, folks. Red cards. We've got 20 minute red cards down here in Super Rugby. And uh, we had a few of them in our last round. Uh, and it stirred up a little bit of a debate about the old 20 minute red cards and potentially the, uh, the softness of the Sansa judiciary, which is uh, causing guys to. Uh, basically be more prone to getting red cards. Let's have a look because we're seven rounds into Super Rugby and uh, we're already coming towards the tail end of the season for the three main European leagues, the Premiership, Top 14 and URC. Let's compare the opening rounds of the competitions just to see uh, how many red cards were issued in those seven rounds and we'll kind of work out the average per game just to see if, if Super Rugby is as dirty as as all that because um, it's being made out to be pretty dirty at the moment if you follow uh, a wee bit of the old social media. So we'll start with the kind of round by round numbers and we'll go through each competition. So we'll actually start with uh, with the URC because remarkably the URC's start was, was pretty disrupted but they... Um, they only had one red card in their first seven rounds. So the first round was eight games. Second round was eight games. Third round was eight games. The fourth round had one red card, which was also among six games. And then four games, five games, and three games. One of them I've kind of put two weeks together. Because with Omicron and teams not able to travel to South Africa, the URC kind of struggled to fulfill all its fixtures. But essentially, in the opening 42 games... The URC only had one red card, and that was Ray Lilo, and that was for a shoulder to the head, so essentially a high tackle. So, yeah, the uh, the rate with the URC, at least in the opening seven rounds, because we compare them, you would hope that players would kind of adapt more to, you know, full-on contact play as the season goes by, and you would see a reduction in red cards. Um, one per 42 games, so 42 games you'll get one red card. That's the average for the URC. There have been obviously more red cards since. I think they're up to nine or 10, but uh, still kind of relatively low across the course of the URC season. The top 14, uh, just remember all these are zeros. Uh, the top 14 was also clean-ish compared to the other two leagues we're gonna look at. Uh, the top 14 did open its competition with two red cards. And then uh, they had one red card in their seventh round. So the, the, the first round, maybe you can understand guys being a little bit, as I mentioned, a little bit rusty. Tackling technique maybe is not quite there. They had two red cards. So one was Tuimaba with a high tackle and one was Takori with a high tackle. So pretty straightforward. And then in the seventh round, <clears throat> you had a slightly different one. Uh, I think it was Helv. Um trying to kick a loose ball on the ground, but somebody dived on it first, so he ends up kicking the dude square in the head, gets red carded. So that one is kind of an outlier in that it's not like poor tackling technique. It's one of those freak incidents that you don't really see very often, but it's three red cards, um, and there were seven games a week for those first few rounds. So you're looking at approximately one red card every 16 games in the top 14. So... Um, a wee bit better than the uh, these two, but um, not as clean as the URC thus far in the first seven rounds anyway. The Premiership, the Premiership started with a real hiss and a roar in terms of its red cards with three. And I remember that because the coaches of multiple teams were kind of having to say, same as what I said earlier, oh, guys are a bit rusty. They're still not used to the, um, the full speed of play. And the numbers will come down. And for the most part, they were right. Because rounds 2, 3, and 4 didn't have any red cards. But then 5, 6, and 7 all have had red cards. So we've had 6 red cards in the opening. 7 rounds of the Premiership season. 6 games per round. Um, you've had Tom Penny with a finger to the eye of Jimmy Gopeth. And Jimmy Gopeth's the recipient in terms of the physical recipient, not the card recipient. Things that were done to him caused two red cards, but um, yeah, Tom Penny was trying to push him off because uh, Gopeth, I think, was holding him in in the ruck. He pushed his face, but ended up putting his finger in his eye. So red card for him. Ted Hill got a tip tackle. 
Rohan Janssen van Rensburg with a high tackle. So those are your first three cards. And then the final three rounds, Mike Williams with a clean out in round five. No, that was round six, sorry. Um, oh, no, it was round five. Adam Coleman, he's had two red cards. The second one was rescinded, but the one that was in round six was for a high tackle. And then the last one, Byron McGuigan, you can look that one up and there's highlights of it because he essentially takes Nick Tompkins, almost like punches him, and then MMA flips him onto the ground. He was proper angry. And that one is like, so far, the most egregious of all the red cards because like the freak kick to the head was kind of accidental. You got a bunch of high tackles. That one is legit, not accidental. Absolutely intentional. I'm going to put your, excuse my language, ass on the ground because you pissed me off. So the most deserved of the red cards that I think you will see. And then how do we compare with Super Rugby? Interestingly, Super Rugby, first round, no red cards. Same with the URC. Second round... We do get one red card, but I'm going to put a little asterisk by this one. Oh, I forgot to mention the Premiership uh, averages one every seven games. Sorry. Um, I'm going to put an asterisk by this one because it was actually two yellow cards to make a red card. Wasn't a high tackle. Wasn't a bad clean out. It was two deliberate knock-ons by the same guy. So I'm probably not going to count that in the average because when we're talking about the 20-minute red card, we're talking about... Uh, you know, out and out red cards rather than guys deliberately knocking on. But you can um, you can call that a legit one if you want. But um, I don't think it's kind of the same category as what we're talking about. Round three, four, and five, no red cards. So Super Rugby starts remarkably clean. It's the last two rounds where we have some issues. There's two red cards in round six. One of them's Tom Banks, upright tackle. Uh, face on face contact fractures his own face he's actually cleared by the Sanzar judiciary saying that there was mitigation with like a change of direction I think from the um, from the ball carrier but a lot of people called that one out as being nonsense and um, the second one in that round was uh, was Dane Zander from the Reds that was a shoulder to the head so kind of a high shot um, the kind of thing we're trying to stamp out. So it's still not looking too bad, right? One double yellow and then two in the first seven. So far, we're well behind the Premiership. We're kind of equal with the top 14. And we're still behind the URC. But round seven is the killer because there were a whopping five red cards in this last round. You've got Nepal Alala with a dangerous clean out. That was on a Tuesday game because we had six games in this round. They were a makeup game. Uh, Shinlo Klein with a shoulder to the head, so a high shot. Nagusa from the drill with a swinging arm to the head, so a high shot. Caleb Clark's one. I kind of regard that one as similar to the kick to the head because he was jumping up to take a high ball. And as he's jumping up, he gets so much higher than the ball carrier who's uh, just kicked the ball. Uh, he ends up clattering into the guy with his legs. He jumps that high that his knees get as high as the other guy's head and his knees hit the guy's head. So it's a bit of a freak accident one. But uh, I think it's different from the regular high shot. I mean, surely he's going to look at his jumping technique on charging down. But it's a bit of a freak accident one. But still, red card. And then uh, Tua Lima with a dangerous clean out. So for the most part, the kind of preventable ones that we're trying to look at in terms of guys getting their technique lower, right? getting that bend when they're going in on tackles, or just not cleaning a guy out. If your only target is his head, you're just going to have to leave him alone. Like, I know sometimes there's that argument of, well, how am I supposed to clean him out if I can't grab him around the neck and roll him off, or if I can't go for his head? You're just going to have to not do it. That's kind of that. So, average for Super Rugby, if, it's, if you want to include that one, then it's like every four and a half games. But if you don't include that one, it's every five games that we are uh, getting uh, a red card in Super Rugby thus far. Now, what do I make of this? I don't think, personally, that the 20-minute red card, and especially Tom Banks getting off in round six, has suddenly meant all the coaches are like, boys, you can just go mess these guys up, because you're going to get let off by the judiciary anyway. I don't think that's a thing. Um, but I would be interested to see, through the course of the season, if Super Rugby does continue with the highest amount of red cards. Obviously, there's multiple reasons for that kind of thing. You do need to take them kind of on a case-by-case -case basis, but you could make an argument that the 20-minute red card 
leads to more dangerous play. I don't think, because I watch, I don't watch the top four team much, but I watch the other two leagues. I don't think the refs there are particularly soft on uh, on dangerous play. So I wouldn't have thought the reason these numbers are higher is because we are stricter on the game down here. I think uh, all the refs are pretty strict on it kind of across the board. But um, yeah, I think that's a blip personally, but I may be proven wrong if the Super Rugby teams keep on with some pretty stupid high shots, which we saw in round seven. So there you go. Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts. Maybe we can at the end of the season run through and see kind of what the final numbers were. I did get all these from ESPN, so if there are any errors, uh, apologies for that. But um, yeah, you guys let me know what your thoughts are. Do you reckon 20 minute red cards are going to lead to the highest rates of reds? Does the 20 minute red card mean the ref is more likely to red? Or do you think that uh, the Super Rugby guys are just being too careless with their technique? We will see. And um, yeah, anyway, you guys take care and I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.